Okay, on the last part uh, of the types of uh, written law, we are moving now to subsidiary legislation. So, what is subsidiary legislation? So, it refers to the rules, uh, regulation, bylaws, order, uh, or any other instrument. So, you can see the definition of uh, subsidiary in, uh, legislation as has been interpreted by the Act 19, uh, by Interpretation Act 1948 and 1967, whereby Section 3 uh, defines uh, subsidiary legislation uh, as proclamation, uh, rule, regulation, order, notification, uh, or any other instrument. Okay, so that is defined by... Uh, Interpretation Act. Now, um, another word for subsidiary legislation can also be subordinate legislation. So, uh, if uh, you use subordinate legislation, it also mean the same. And that's another word, uh, delegated legislation, or it can also be uh, secondary legislation. So, basically, they are laws made through powers delegated uh, by legislature to a body or person via a parent statute. So let me just show you um, how it is. Okay. Um, what do we mean by this uh, legislation, uh, subsidiary legislation? Eh? Now, um, legislature, okay, parliament make laws. So, for example, they make the Parent Act. Remember, we have seen what is Parent Act or Principal Act. So, for uh, in this case, I'm using Architects Act 1967 as an example. So, in one of the sections, which is Section 35, if you read, the board may with the approval of the minister. The board here means the uh, organization which actually um, enforce the Act. So, this board here means the uh, Board of Architects or Lembaga Architect Malaysia. So, the board here may with the approval of minister makes rules generally as may be necessary or expedient for the purpose of carrying out or giving effect to the provisions of this act and in particular but without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing for prescribing anything as is required by this act to be prescribed or as it may deem necessary so it's a very lengthy uh, provision but what it means is that okay uh, the board okay uh, Lembaga Architect Malaysia uh, may make any rules. So, the board is under the purview of the minister. So, in this case, it's um, Menteri Kerja Raya or Minister, minister, uh, minister of Works. Yeah? So, um, Minister of Work as executive, we allow the, we approve uh, the rules. So, from Parent Act of Architects Act 1967 by virtue of Section 35, they can actually make a rule so uh, through this minister okay and after that uh, they come up with a subsidiary legislation uh, this is what we call architects rule 1996 so why does um why do we have to have a subsidiary legislation okay why now they are uh, one of the reason why is because the law making process involve a very long and complicated procedures and those procedures are mandatory basically whatever procedures in the parliament you must follow so the whole process can take years right uh, the whole process of argument debating committee stage and in, from house of representative it goes to the senate so um, it, it requires a lot of participation contribution even before it goes to the parliament you must have all these pre-parliamentary stage whereby the uh, you have to get the um, approval of a certain ministry uh, some meetings you know so the process is very lengthy and in fact it involves a lot of members so are not even in the legislature so this particular witnesses uh, for the because of this lengthy process so um, the acts normally they have this provision in their particular act which allow uh, the executive, in this, in this case the minister, to actually uh, come up with rules eh, to actually enforce the act. Eh? So because uh, in, the, in the first place, uh, the legislature has insufficient time and sometimes eh, the act itself is insufficient. 
um, to actually to cater a lot of things. And another one, it may be, um, there are certain, uh, maybe when, when the, when the surrounding or environment change, it, since it takes years or it takes months, um, to implement, uh, a new rules, so, uh, it speed up the whole process. So, rather than you go to the mandatory procedures of lawmaking process in the parliament, uh, you can straight away go through, uh, the minister may straight away approve uh, certain rules which may be necessary to enforce uh, the act. So, basically, um, but then, um, sometimes eh, the legislature itself, the act itself is very uh, loose. Basically, they just merely lay down the basic and main laws and most of the details are uh, given to the delegated person so in this case the minister and uh, bear in mind that this particular uh, subsidiary legislation which is the architect's rule should not contravene the uh, architect's act 1967 now you are going to learn more on the topics of subsidiary legislation under the administrative law okay in your uh, semester five so, uh, as far as uh, we are concerned today, uh, you need to know what is subsidiary legislation. Uh, you can also refer to my notes for details um, for details on this particular area. Okay, you can see the advantages of subsidiary legislation. Now, when we had this, uh, when we have this subsidiary legislation, um, there are chances that uh, this is being flexible. Okay, um, minister can make laws and all. So, we need to actually control, okay. We need to control um, the impact of having too many subsidiary legislation. Okay, now, uh, before I go uh, further, let me just show you an example of what I've shown you just now. The Parent Act and the subsidiary legislation, yeah. Okay, uh, this is the Architects Act, right. And we have a look at the section just now, section 35. Where is our section 35? Okay. Okay, rules. Okay. See? This is the one, eh? Okay. So, the board may be the approval. This is what I said just now. The board may be the approval. Right? Uh, make rules generally. Okay. Now, that one is the Architects Act. Okay. This is the, the Parent Act. Now, we're going to look at the rules. Okay. This is the rules. I just enlarge it a bit. Okay, this is the rules. Okay, now look at the the first part where they're going to mention. Okay, just now was the act, the parent act. So this is the rules, Architects Rule 1996. In exercise of the powers conferred by Section 35, meaning this particular rules derive the uh, derive uh, based on the uh, powers conferred by Section 35. Yeah, so in exercise of the powers. Conferred by Section 35 of Architects Act 1967, the Board of Architects Malaysia, with the approval of Minister, makes the following rule. So, the Board of Architects Malaysia is the enforcement body okay, of this particular Act. So, uh, the Minister here is the Minister of Works. Eh? So, Minister of Work will approve the rules that has been uh, designed by this uh, Board of Architects Act. So, these are all the rules pertaining for the uh for the uh, smooth uh, riding of the architect set 1967 if you can see the details eh, what does this rule has okay he has the administration how how will you conduct the meeting notice of meetings vote proxies minutes committees registrar and then uh how do you register and then what are the code of conduct uh, okay compared to architects act Okay, compared to the uh, Architects Act. Okay, now if you look at the contents, eh? Okay, 
content looks about the establishment of board of architects, registration, right? Registration, who can register, who can be cancelled. But these are very general provisions. So uh, the details are okay. If we can, we can try have a look. Okay, um, we can have a look. Okay, register of architects. Okay, if you look at section five. Okay, look at section five. Section four, okay. Section five. It says here, the register of architects shall be in four section, which is section A, B, and C. That's it. Okay, and then how do you register? So you need to go through the architects rules. So if you go to architects rules, what would be the section? Application for registration. Look at the section seven. Uh, sorry. Uh. Okay, uh, rule 17. Okay, rule 17. Eh? Okay, rule 17. Where's rule 17? Uh, this is where you can see on the part of registration. How do you register? Who can be registered? Okay, the rules we provide in detail, right? Every person desire of being registered an architect, okay, can register. Okay, they can make application. Okay, they can make application to the board. When can you meet? Uh, how to be notified? And what will be the fee? Okay. Processing fee in part 2. So, do you have to look at part 2? How much? So, we can see that uh, what was prescribed in the act is not uh, very not very detailed. But what is described in this uh, near, uh, which is uh, will be very detailed. Look at, we can have a look at uh, part 2. Okay. So, this is for registration. Okay, for architect. So, if you want to register, this is the detail. Okay. Okay. First schedule. Where does it say here just now? Uh, rule 17. Okay. Application. Uh, uh -huh. Processing fee. Part 2. Okay, first schedule. Okay, so look at part 2. Okay. Okay. These are the one. Part 2. Processing fee for architect. If you want to apply. Uh, then after that, um, there will be processing fee. There will be registration fee. And this one for you to renew. And if your name has been uh, strike out for failure to renew, uh, you can apply for receipt. You have to pay another uh, 500. See? Almost the same. Yeah? So these are, are the details. So you can see the difference. Okay, so when the parliament uh, enact an act, which is what we call parent act, or let me just uh, put it here. Maybe some of you uh, can't see it. Principal act. Eh? Okay. Okay, principal act. Eh? So, um, with assuming we are using Architects Act, Section 35, which give powers to the minister to make rules, Okay, so we have the subsidiary registration and I've shown you uh, both uh, um, both uh, act and the rules. Yeah? Okay, how do we control eh? uh, how do we control abuse uh, of the subsidiary legislation? There are chances that the minister may uh, make a lot of um, subsidiary legislation which it might be abuse of uh, its powers. We can uh, look at methods of control of over subsidiary legislation.